If I could have your attention here. In the media center, we'll begin our post-race Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series media availability for the 59th annual Daytona 500. We are joined by second place finisher Ryan Blaney, driver of the number 21 Motorcraft Quick Lane Tire and Auto Center Ford, and third place driver A.J. Allmendinger, driver of the number 47 Kroger Clickless Chevrolet for JTG Doherty Racing. Gentlemen, incredible show out there. Let's start with you, Ryan. Please walk us through those final laps uh, from your perspective. Yeah, um, well, I thought we had a good car all day to start off, and um, we showed that definitely in the first half of the race. Uh, and then we got some damage there. Uh, one of those big wrecks about middle of the race and, and kind of hurt our car a little bit. Me and AJ were talking, though, it looks like everyone ran a race at Martinsville. I mean, everyone's stuff was tore up, and um, there was only a handful of cars left at the end. But uh, we all got single file there with maybe 15 to go or something like that. And I tried to make a move with 10 to go to see what would happen, and no one really went with me in the 22, tried to, and, and it really wasn't happening. And I was kind of worried uh, it was just going to end that way. Um, and luckily, I got Joey behind me there down the front stretch, and we were able to lay back to him and get a huge run into one. Uh, and at that same moment, the 41 went to go past the 42, and it, it kept my run going uh, all the way up to second. Um, and down the back, I look at my mirror, and I see the 47 car, and I'm like, oh, I'll just lay back to him, and we'll get a big run to... I just wasn't very fast. <laughs> I was still wide open. I thought you were running out of gas. I was. <laughs> no, that was all I had. <laughs> I thought I'd lay back to him, and we'll get a good run at it. Maybe we have a shot at it. And then um, I started kind of running out of gas there. Uh, into three, we started sputtering pretty bad, and uh, luckily it made it back to the line. But a uh, good showing for us. It was, it was a good way to start off the year. It stinks to be so close. Um, but uh, I think that's good momentum for our team to, to be good at the beginning of the day, get some damage, and come back and be able to rally for a good finish. AJ, you can't, it seemed like you came out of nowhere there in the final lap that, to, to have a great finish. Maybe walk through those final laps in your, from your perspective. Yeah, um, you know, we, we had a, a great handling car the whole time here. We just didn't have a lot of outright speed. So, uh, you know, I kept seeing Ryan and, and Joey kept making moves, and, and I just knew my car wasn't very good on the bottom. So, you know, I knew uh, my best effort was going to be kind of the last 10, 12 laps once I kind of got up to wherever I was running seventh or eighth there was to stay up top. I just started saving fuel. I knew everybody was close. So... You know, my, I knew my best chance to have a good result was to just sit there and try to run half throttle, stay in line and, and not let anybody kind of slide up. So every time Ryan and Joe would kind of make a run, I'd try to keep the gap close. But I was just kind of holding half throttle there and, and uh, knowing that this race is probably going to come down to who ran out of fuel or, or um, you know, kind of if somebody checked up in front of all of us and who could try to miss it. So, um, yeah, you know, White flag there, you know, I saw, I saw, as Ryan said, they were getting a run on the bottom. I just was like, all right, I'm just going to ride it out up top there and see what happens. And uh, the five, I think it was the five and the 27, kind of right in front of me, it looked like they just checked up a little bit, and, and it kind of right there I thought, all right, they're starting to run out of fuel. And I just kind of ducked right in the middle there, and, and uh, the 42 was out of fuel, which I think checked up the 22, which was next to me, and that's kind of how I got through the pack. So, um you know, just solid. We, we didn't have the best, best speed outright since we've been here. Uh, you know, we put a great effort. The duels, we, we got a good finish and unfortunately had the, uh, the penalty there. So uh, to come out with a, a top five finish, I think this is the first time since I've been with the 47 team. We've actually raced our primary car at the 500. So that's, that's a start. And overall, just, uh, you know, Kroger sponsoring this event, being a part of this event for 10 years now to be in our race car full time. Um, you know, all the, all the guests and all the activation that they've done was just uh, was fun to, to have a great run for them and, and to be able to kind of put them in the top three and give them a chance to win this race. Outstanding. We're going to open the floor up for questions. If you have a question, we'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start with Jenna and go to George. Jenna Fire, AP, I have two separate questions. What did you guys make of, of all the wrecks? Um, I guess half the field didn't finish it was at the five minute clock or was there too much aggression out there or was it the stages what happened today yes yes <laughs> aj yeah. you're so yeah. intelligent yeah yes. yeah no i mean I, to me you can see and i don't know about you know i mean to me it seemed like you get five laps to go in the stage 
everything would kind of amp back up there. You know, we were running single file in that second stage, and three to go, you know, everybody kind of starts getting racing. And, uh, you know, I think really the last couple of years here, you know, for me, I've noticed because I've, I've always tried to kind of hang in the back and, and, you know, pick a time to make a run. Everybody just gets three wide now, and, and it's hard to make any moves happen. So I think that that anticipation level of, you know, instead of waiting 20 or 30 to go, you have to go with 100 to go. you got to get your track position, and if you lose it, it's really hard to get it back. So I think to me that's the bigger deal is the fact that over the last couple of years, it's hard to make moves from the middle of the pack up through the field with 20 to go. So everybody was trying to get up there and, and make sure they got the track position, and, you know, that's what happens here. Got anything, Ryan? No, I'd agree with that. You know, once we get three wide and you're 20th, you can't go anywhere. There's no room to make any any ground. And with the leader blocking every lane, it just kind of stalls everybody out. So um, really what AJ said, everyone tries to get their track position with 100 to go, something like that, just so they can stay up front for the end. And Ryan, for you, I remember 2015 at Talladega, you had a very strong car, but you couldn't get anybody to work with you at the end and really give you a shot to race for the win. Has that changed for you, or when you pulled out a line today, was it like deja vu? Um, I think it's helped a little bit. Um, the yellow things on the back bumper help. Uh, not being there anymore, uh, that, that seems to help out a, a little bit. But, um, you know, really, you can talk all about that of people not going with young drivers or, or whoever. Uh, and really, at the end of these things, you kind of are forced to go with whoever wants to go. And... Uh, today, luckily, we had a teammate with Joey behind us who would want to go with us, and uh, it's just kind of circumstance and timing and um, when you choose to go and if the person behind you thinks that they can go with you. Is it George? Yeah, uh, back here, guys, for both of you, George Diaz with the Orlando Sentinel, kind of uh, dovetailing on what Jenna said. Is there a concern? Everybody knows that Daytona, get, things get amped up, but is there a concern given the new rules packages that you have with these stages that this is going to be amped up uh, and kind of what to expect, whether it's Daytona or short track or, or regular, regular course? I mean, <clears throat> I think Daytona and, the Tal and Talladega are going to be the extreme because, uh, you know, it, it comes down to trying to get your track position and, and, you know, you see people lay back and, and now with the stages, you know, there's points on the line. So I think Daytona is probably the most amped up. Uh, and it kind of changes how people race. To me, I don't think any of the other 32 races that we're going to go to, we're all driving as hard as we can every lap anyways. Yeah, you know, you get a caution with eight to go before the stage ends. There's going to be some strategy, maybe guys on old tires, and, and that might make some, some difference when it comes to the stages. But uh, I think it's just the extreme of the Daytona 500 uh, and these, these plate races, the way we have to race. And now with stages, with their points being on the line, it just things are going to happen like that. Go next to Lewis. Lewis Frank Reuters over here to your left. Um, it seemed to me that the manufacturers, you know, some of the teams had a uh, a, a strategy of running as a squadron. It, it, it bit the Toyotas early on. What have you learned, you know, from running together on, on plate races like this? Uh, you know, I thought the Fords had it made early. You know, we had um, six or seven of us kind of lined up there, and we were really fast, and uh, it seemed everything kind of be going our way. Um, and then I know a, a handful of them got taken out, and, uh, and then all of a sudden it kind of seems like we're the underdogs. There was only two or three of us left. Uh, with the 41 and the 22 and myself, 43 was in there. Um, but really, there wasn't a lot of us left in there. There was mostly Chevrolets, but um, you see the plans in the middle of the race kind of working well, and then the, at the end, it, it never really seems to work that way. But um, I definitely think uh, manufacturers are really working together a lot more uh, in the past couple of years, uh, just because you can get so many of them uh, to work together. So uh, at Ford, we were lucky to get four more cars that we could work with, which really allowed us to try to do that today and be strong with uh, with all those all those cars. Okay, we're going to go to Steve and then back to Jenna. Yeah, hi. Uh, for either one who wants to answer, it's uh, uh, Steve Harmer with the Atlanta General Constitution. Is it, I know it's hard to kind of project what the what ifs and everything, but what if uh, Chase doesn't run out of gas? How, how much did you, you guys think uh, behind him had for him at the end? Uh, he ran out of gas, so there's really no what ifs. Um, if wishes were fishes, the world would be an ocean, so. Um, Is that Swedish fish? I love Swedish fish. I like it too, but 
I don't know. I don't, you can I, get those at your local Kroger, by the way, people. <laughs> Damn, you are good at these sponsor plugs. You are good. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what would happen. Um, just because it, it played out, it's, it's, uh, you kind of just play with the cards you're dealt. So um, you never know if they would have made a run or not. So unfortunately, he ran out. Um, I was pulling for him there, but uh, you never know. Uh, speaking of Chase, I, AJ, you're one who particularly takes losing difficult and having your career. And Ryan, you know Chase a little bit. He um, he left without with his father without talking to any media, and he's obviously very upset right now. Do you guys can you guys understand that? Yeah, I mean it's the Daytona 500. I mean it, it's you know any race. It, it's he's gonna win a he's gonna win so many races. Ryan and Ryan and Chase and the. All those young guys. I mean, they're going to win a ton of races. Kyle Larson, those those types of guys. But it's hard to know how many chances you're really going to have at the at the Daytona 500. And you know, it's Ryan kind of with with the the Penske effort and Chase. You think, okay, they're going to have a lot of chances to win, but he had a dominant car, so I can understand it. I mean, it's it's hard and and uh, you know, at times, yes, it's our job and we got to go about the right way and sometimes we don't but in the end it's our passion and it's what we live off of so uh, I can completely understand that and, and have uh, I because at the point you're not gonna say anything good what are you gonna say you know oh shucks we'll try it next time we'll go to Atlanta no so that's I understand I mean it's the way he is um, you know he wants to do so well and he does do a great job uh, and everything, you know, you see him, he should have won two or three races last year and things just didn't work out, nothing of his fault. Um, and, you know, you, you get down on yourself. But uh, like AJ said, he's going to win tons of races um, in his career. He's going to win a lot this year. Uh, and he had a great shot to win that race. It looked like he was the best car that, controlled, that could control both lanes. Uh, and you saw that in the duels and you saw that today. He could really keep both lanes at bay. And, and no, not many other cars could do that today. Um, no matter who was out front, uh, the top would get a run or something like that. But his car was really, really good. So, you know, I can understand his disappointment for sure. I mean, you're you're leading the race. Looks like you're going to win uh, the Daytona 500. And you know how he is. He's very hard on himself. But it wasn't his fault today at all. I mean, can't help you run out of gas. Just um, I can understand his frustration. But uh, I said he's going to win a lot this year. So and throughout his career. So um, it's not it's easy to get frustrated right now. But he's going to be uh, he's going to be okay. Okay, we're going to go to our left to Jay. This is for either of you guys over here on your left. Um, I want to ask you real quick another question about the, the segment stages. Um, it, it, Danica was mentioning that one of the issues was that you had guys out there with um, new tires, old tires, all racing against each other and made for some shuffling up of the field. I don't know if that was what was causing some of the wrecks out there, but are you guys concerned that going forward, that not just here at a super speedway, but maybe going forward, um, through the rest of the season, that there's there's going to be a some these stages are going to create some carnage um, throughout the season. I mean, <laughs> I it I guess I don't know really how to answer that. Maybe, but isn't that what we're trying to do? Is make some of these racing races more exciting throughout the middle of the race? You know, um, you know, there in the past you've seen a lot of single file racing, and yeah, we got single file there, but Everybody's trying to position themselves to win the race. But I still go back to the, the speedway races are unique because it changes the way you race. It's not going to change the way we race any other racetrack. We're going to drive as hard as we can, you know, the, the speedway races. And, yeah, you get a, a caution that falls at the right time, and maybe some guys stay out and some guys pit trying to get that, uh, get that stage win or, or points. It might be, but isn't that what we want? Isn't that what we're trying to do is, is – kind of beef up the middle of the races so people stay entertained, and that's what it's all about. If nobody's watching, it doesn't matter. Any additional questions for these gentlemen? Uh, well, we got a question in the back, and then we'll go over to Lewis. Donna Beth Wildman, Benicia Harold, and since I'm from the Bay Area, way to go, AJ. Congratulations on this. Um, that's North uh, Cal. <laughs> <laughs> North Cal. Uh, what I want, uh, what I'd like to follow up on the stage is, um, now that you've had a chance to do it for real, as opposed to talking about it, how did driving stages affect your team, working with your uh, crew chief? Um, did it change anything at all, or was it more like a um, uh, uh, competition caution? Uh, I don't, 
I don't really see it as a competition caution, uh, you know, mainly because you're benefited for running in the top 10 throughout uh, at the end of the stage. So you saw some some teams and cars group pit early just to try to uh, maybe short pit and get out front before the end of the stage and get some points. Uh, if there was a caution that fell maybe 10 laps before or, or earlier. Uh, so I thought the communication and the strategy side from the drivers to the crew chiefs were uh, very important today. And I think you're going to, uh, honestly, I think it's going to be more important on other racetracks, not the speedways. So I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was, it was good. It made for good racing um, before the stage were over just to try to get some points to help you out towards the playoffs. So uh, it was definitely a lot of strategy. And, and they did, a, I know my team, they did a, a great job of, of making sure we you know, pitted when the time was right with our group to try to set us up to be up front uh, at the time the stages were over. Next, Lewis. Lewis Frank Reuters again. AJ, can you give us any insight into Kurt? You, you may know, have learned him about him pretty well at Ward Penske. What? What? <laughs> As uh, a driver. Yeah, I mean, he likes long walks on the beach. Uh, <laughs> sometimes he goes to the symphony after he goes to a baseball game and... Uh, his favorite flower is the dandelion. So, I, I I don't know. I mean, he's a race car. He's a hell of a race car driver. I've always said that. And, uh, you know, I think he's no secret, kind of like myself. He's had ups and downs. But, um, you know, it's just cool to see somebody like that that, that puts all the effort into it. I mean, we all do. So, it's sometimes you, you don't want to be happy for the person because you're jealous that you weren't the one in it. But in the end, he did a great job. He deserved the win, and, and it's great for that team. Go next to Kelly. Actually, it's roses. It's not dandelion. I was just joking. <laughs> Kelly Crandall from Racer.com. Ryan, you had quite a showing this week in your dual race, and then here today being able to kind of move through the field, uh, make a lot of aggressive moves, and, and contend for the lead. Is that was that comfort in, in the in the strength of the car, or are you getting you feel like you're getting more comfortable at, at plate racing and knowing what you can and can't do? I think a little bit of both. Um, I thought our car in the dual race was spectacular. Uh, it's a shame it got tore up, but uh, our backup car was honestly, I felt like, just as good. Uh, we came from the back really early and were able to drive up through the middle and our car handled, handled correctly to where we can get up through the middle and be aggressive uh, when the time uh, was right and um, we were able to stay up there. I think our car had enough speed to stay up there too. And We could never grab the lead at the right time to be the one car up front trying to block lanes. We could never just get that right push at the right time. It was probably something I was doing wrong to not get the right run. But uh, I think it definitely is a little bit of both with uh, the car, myself, and, and myself and Josh Williams up top. Uh, my spotter getting a little bit more comfortable with each other and, and communicating really well. He's done a great job. He hasn't been spotting for very long. He spotted for AJ um, a couple of years ago, and uh, he only started a couple of years before that. So he has a, a lot to learn, but I think he's done a great job, and he's been a big part of it as well. We're going to come over here to your right, the mic. Mike Neff from FrontStretch.com. This is for both of you. Um, plate racing is a different animal, but momentum is still a big part of this sport. And both of you are starting into your second full seasons with your crew chiefs. Is this momentum starting off the season, do you feel like it's going to set you up for a strong run towards the playoffs as we get through the end of the season? Yeah, I mean, anytime you have a good finish, it's going to help. Uh, you know, last year we had a, an okay 500 and went to Atlanta. We had actually a fast car, but had a poor finish. And then, you know, Vegas, I think we ran okay. And next thing you know, you, you feel like you start pressing a little bit, trying to get a good finish in there and, and start gaining some points. So, um, you know, this race doesn't dictate that, okay, our car is for sure going to be great at Atlanta. But more than anything, it, it does help to know, all right, you know, we, we got some good points and, and we don't have to press like we did last year. We don't have to do anything crazy, just go do our jobs and, you know, you don't really know where you, you stand until about eight or nine races in. And by that, by that time, we've went to every type of racetrack, and you kind of know, all right, where are we strong, where are we weak? But, uh, you know, these races are hard to get great finishes in. So anytime you get one, you take it, and, and uh, it helps a ton. And, you know, the Daytona 500 is the biggest, so it, it's at least a kickstart into Atlanta for our team knowing, okay, we don't, we don't have to do anything crazy. We just keep doing what our, what our jobs are and, and see where we kind of fall into place and, and see where that is. Ryan, your thoughts on that? Not really the same as AJ's. Um, you know, anytime you get a good finish uh, anywhere, no matter what track, it always kind of propels you into next week. Um, you know, it, maybe it feels a little bit better that it's the Daytona 500, but like he said, it doesn't mean your car's going to be great at Atlanta. Uh, it doesn't mean your car's going to be great when you go out west. So um, 
until you get nine or ten in, um, you, then you can kind of get a good judge of how your cars are and where your team stacks up. But uh, no matter where it is, if you get a good finish, it, it definitely helps your team confident-wise uh, for the next week and, and maybe a couple weeks after that. Well, gentlemen, thanks again for the show tonight. At that. Safe travels to Atlanta. We'll see you next week. All right, Take care you. now. We're going to go ahead and uh, continue on with our post-race media availability and start with the winning race team for the 59th annual Daytona 500. We are joined by team co-owner Gene Haas and then no stranger to Daytona Beach, a local uh, crew chief, Tony Gibson. Let's start with you, old man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you've been coming here since, uh, since uh, who knows when, and now you're a winner and the great American race. Talk yeah, about it's, that. Uh, it's insane, man. I, like I said, I, I grew up uh, five miles from here, and my mom retired from here, and, and my dad uh, raced here all of his life. And uh, to come here, and, and you know, I've won it in the 500 before, but not as a crew chief. So to come here and be able to do this is, is amazing. You know, I'm, I'm getting old and getting towards the end of my deal, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice to be able to, to get this done. It's, I can't describe it. I still haven't really sunk in. I, other than Stuart beating on me and said we won at Daytona 500, I, I really didn't realize we did. Um, but, uh, you know, I just think, I think everybody, you know, especially, you know, Gene and Tony and Ford Motor Company and, uh, you know, Doug Yates and, and everybody and Monster Energy and Haas Automation, everybody back at the shop. It's just a huge, uh, I'm just a small part of, of what goes on here. But I, I just happen to, to be the fortunate one that gets to sit up here. But all my guys, you know, there's most of them have been with me for over 13 years as a crew. And, uh, you know, we were fortunate enough to be with Dale Jr. for one of these things, but uh, to see those guys stick with me this long and, and to be able to finally win it uh, is, is pretty amazing. Gene, you have a cha you have championship under your belt as a car owner, but now you have a Daytona 500 title to your name. Uh, how does that feel? Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> you know, I, I tell you, you know, being a, a NASCAR car, car owner, uh, you know, by myself and with Tony, you, you know the frustration it takes to to come to these uh, uh, races every week and week out because, you know, most of the time uh, you go home with nothing if, and, and most of the time you come home with a wrecked car. So it, it's a really, really grueling uh, racing schedule. And uh, the Daytona 500 is, is probably the hardest friggin' race to win out there. It's... Uh, you know, you, you have you, you cannot believe how hard these guys work on these cars. They sit there and massage them, and you know, get the templates to fit perfectly, and every little gap is perfect, and they color code them. And there's so much work that goes into these cars, and then you bring them here, and and you wind up, you know, destroying them. And uh, uh, you know, most of us kind of feel like, wow, is this really worth it? But uh, when you do win it, and you get one of these little rings, it, it suddenly feels like it's worth it. Uh, it, yeah, it's just a, it's a, a awe-inspiring win, and it, it really does, uh, you know, make you feel like like all the frustration and, and the years and years of not winning it, 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 it just makes it all suddenly okay. That was okay, and uh, uh, yeah, you know, just uh, it's a great feeling. It's a great feeling to say we we finally accomplished that. You know, both uh, you know Tony and myself have have uh, you know. It's been a long. It's been a long time. I know Tony's had a long career, and, and uh, I've been doing this for a long time too. Um, and uh, you know, it just it's it's a real it's a real feeling of satisfaction. Uh, I think for both of us to say that you know, we accomplished something that so few people can accomplish in in the racing world. Well, it's my honor now to introduce to you the champion of the 59th annual Daytona 500, and that is Kurt Busch. Some superlatives on Kurt. This is his 29th victory in 577 NASCAR Monster Energy Cup Series races. And, of course, his first Daytona 500 triumph. Kurt, you did it without a rearview mirror. How did you pull that one off? <laughs> uh, thank you. I, I'm still uh, just blown away by the amount of effort that it takes to win one of these races, let alone the Daytona 500. Uh, this is very special. Uh, you know, to have come here over the years and to have fast cars and to not deliver for the team, you leave here feeling more dejected than any other racetrack. Uh, the years that you have really fast race cars and you end up on the, the hook, wrecked, those are the worst feelings. 
Then there's years where you don't have speed and you can't figure out why. And you try to salvage a, a solid finish and jump into points mode. This place will challenge every emotion. And every day you wake up when you're here for speed weeks, you have a full tank of optimism each and every day. And Tony Gibson is an incredible crew chief, and I can't thank him enough because building this car started back after we finished Talladega last fall. And we had a lot of switch over at uh, SHR this off season with building all these new Fords. So extra trips to the wind tunnel, uh, extra massaging on this, uh, changing that. Uh, you know, when you, when you have a crew chief that grows up in the shadows of the grandstands here in Daytona, you know you've got the best guy because his heart is in it. And that's what Daytona is about. You've got to give it your heart. And I gave my heart to a beautiful bride, Ashley, this off season, and it's just been a fairy tale since the day I met her. And so here we are sharing Victory Lane together as a team uh, with my new bride, with Ford, our first race together with Ford, and my first race with Monster Energy, uh, you know, for, with them as the entitled sponsor. And then for Gene Haas to believe in me years ago, uh, he said, I'm all about the trophy. You know, you're not know much of a points racer. He just wants the trophies. And this is an incredible feeling to have all this hard work uh, delivered today and driving into victory lane. It's, it's unbelievable. Okay, and we are now also joined by team co-owner Tony Stewart. Smoke, your first Daytona 500 win as a car owner. Talk about that experience for you. Well, if I knew all I had to do was retire to get it done, I would have <laughs> retired a long time ago. <laughs> it's... Um, couldn't be more proud to be up here with these three guys. I mean, to to go back to when we joined with Gene and, and his group and made it Stuart Haas Racing and uh, bringing Tony Gibson and his crew in here and then hiring Kurt, it's, um, it's really neat to see how this has all gelled and come about. And just really uh, my my hat's off and biggest thanks to everybody at Stuart Haas Racing because we, we threw every curveball at them we could think of in the last eight years. And it's just a big, big group of racers that all they want to do is just go out and win races and uh, championships. And, you know, nobody complained this winter when we had all the hard work and long hours. And, uh, you know, I can't think of a better way to, to thank them for that hard work. And, uh, you know, for Gene, for letting me be a part of this with him. And, um, you know, everyone at Ford Performance that, that really has worked hard to uh, make us feel a part of their family in a short amount of time and help us get acclimated really quickly. And, uh, you know, Roush Yates engine, Doug Yates just brought awesome horsepower like he always does to Daytona. So uh, just a great group of, of guys. You know, Tony Gibson does a great job on the box as always. And, uh, you know, I told Kurt, I said, it's probably the, the best race and most patient race I've ever seen him run today. So he was definitely very deserving of, of this win. Okay, we're going to open the floor up for questions. We're going to start with Jenna and go up to Jim and then to Lee. Jenna Fryer, AP, I have two questions. Um, Kurt, Mitch said earlier this week that he called after the clash and he told you, great job getting Monster all over TV, even though you wrecked, and he didn't think that you were very pleased with his assessment. So how did Mitch and them feel today after a victory? It's, it's incredible to have uh, such a, a powerful brand uh, share the car with Gene Haas. And the way that uh, Gene Haas worked together with Rodney Sachs, Mark Hall, Hilton Sloshberg and Mitch Covington, it, it feels like family when you share a car like we do. And you know, when you're, when you're in wrecks and they're doing a super slow-mo of your car going through the grass, you know, that's what my, my bride Ashley has, has turned me into a, such a positive thinker. She's like, that was great exposure for Monster. And then Mitch is texting at the same time. And I'm like, no, um, think of Tony Gibson and all the <laughs> effort that he put into building this beautiful car and now it's thrashed. And here we are in victory lane together after such a, a, a difficult race. Uh, the, the more unpredictability that keeps getting thrown into the Daytona 500, now you just predict unpredictability. And with the uh, segments today, uh, that threw in another wrench uh, with guys on old tires, guys on new tires. Uh, you know, a lot of veterans were taken out. And then there was the lap 80 wreck when it seemed like that should have been the time where we all settled in as a group that knows how to race at Daytona, and that's when we had the most wrecks. And so I was thankful that I got through a lot of the wrecks with minimal damage, and Gibson managed the five-minute clock. I mean, we, here we are. We're, we're minute, minutes away from not being able to repair the car and having a clock tell us that we can't compete anymore, and so we were that close to being eliminated. 
and there's just so many new things within this sport, you just keep rolling with it and you smile and you know that you got a great team with Stuart Haas, great team with uh, Gene Haas in Oxnard, California, and a great team with Monster Energy in Corona, California. And Gene, what made you take a gamble on Kurt? I, I mean, it doesn't look like a gamble now, but when you did it, you maybe were offering him a second chance. Uh, it's still a gamble. You never know about Kurt. <laughs> 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 He's joking. He doesn't really mean that. Uh, you know, I, I tell you, I, uh, <clears throat> early on, it, it, when you when you look for drivers, uh, you know, some some people like to develop their own drivers, and uh, you know, I, I, we did that a little bit, but that's a difficult way to go. I, I look for, uh, you know, a driver has proven talent. Uh, Kurt, you know, is already a, a past champion. Uh, he's won, you know, you know. I think we started over 25 races, so you know, he, he definitely had the uh, <clears throat> ability. And, and you know, I, when we when we we, we met in a, a, a steakhouse at Indianapolis, and I just said, "Why well, hey, would you, you know, would you be interested in driving for me?" And he said, "Yeah," and uh, it just started from there. And it wasn't really a, a big uh, leap of faith on my part. I, I know he, I know he had gone through, a, you know, a little bit of a transition you know out of Penske and so I kind of thought you know I knew he I knew he, I knew he had the talent to do it and like I say uh, I wasn't interested in points racing I was interested in winning and I thought he could deliver that and and he has done that so uh, you know I, I knew he had the ability to do it so that was really the basis for my decision and, and it looks like uh, today it looks like it all paid off okay we're gonna go to Jim to Lee this young lady up front and then over to Joe Jim Utter, Motorsport.com. Kurt, you touched on this a little, and Gene had mentioned the work that goes into massaging the car. What rolled into Victory Lane was a lot more than massaged, as, long as, as well as many of your uh, competitors today. Uh, did you feel this race turned into more one of survival? Daytona is always about survival. Um, as I gave Tony uh, Gibson a high five before we started the race, I said, it's 90% protect the car. 10% go for aggression, race hard, and execute at the end. Um, thankful enough that we didn't have too much damage. The nose was clean and the tail was clean. And yeah, the sides were a bit wrinkled up. And you just kind of let the rough edges drag. You go for it. I mean, there's, there's things that everybody has to go through to win this race. And usually there's not a, a perfect car anymore. And so I've, I've just let the care go to the side when, when it comes to trying to protect the car, making sure it doesn't have too much damage, because you always want a perfect car to have the most <laughs> speed at the end, and it, that's not the case anymore. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com, congratulations, everybody. Um, Kurt, when Gibson told you you had, like, a lap short of, of fuel, um, what started going through your mind? Did you start feathering the car? And also, um, so many times you have been the pusher instead of the pushy, you know, the guy that wins, being that close so many times, has that prepared you for what you did today? Uh, with the fuel situation, he said we were half a lap shy. I just figured uh, he would figure out how to gain a half a lap as we raced. <laughs> I, uh <-huh>. yeah. <coughs> well, here's the well, <coughs> well, We had a plan, and then Stewart is sitting beside me, and I looked at him, and I said, how much fuel is he actually burning right here, running third? And I said, is he like running half throttle, quarter throttle? And the show was like, no, he's all out. He's matted. That's the only way you can run there. And I'm like, oh, perfect. <laughs> Not what we wanted to hear. So he wasn't helping me any. No, and I wasn't helping you. I was full <laughs> throttle. <laughs> Either we were all going to come to the line together like we did, or we were all going to run out together because we were on the same sequence as the majority of those cars up front. And sometimes you just got to roll with it. To have the mirror um, fall off, and it, it broke on the left hinge, and so the right hinge was still mounted to the, to the upper roll cage. And so I took my right arm and I tried to fix it. Now the mirror's going vertical, but I couldn't get enough angle in it to see behind me. And I was like, oh, this is just exciting. What would, what would Ashley do at this point? Because she just laughs at stuff like this. And I'm like, okay, I'm just laughing at it too. Well, I can't see crap out the back. I could see nobody back there. And so then I said, well, what would my dad do? And what would he teach me to do as a young racer? And I thought of the times when I raced my little dwarf car with my dad as my owner and my crew chief. And I raced that little dwarf car without a mirror. And you go off intuition. 
you go off momentum, you go off sound of other cars. And I visioned a track that the top groove was the primary groove when I was growing up as a kid. And I said, I just got to stay up high. I got to take advantage of other people's mistakes. And I have to leave two to three feet to the right side of my car to try to absorb guys from the left side and make my car as wide as I could and just going off of feel. And everybody kept making moves and I knew that I was sticking to the top side and I couldn't believe it all worked out. I mean, the spotter said, they're four back after I exited turn two. And I'm like, oh, we're done. And then he said, five back. And I'm like, oh, this is a new spotter. What the hell is he talking about? <laughs> <clears throat> and then I just, I really, I hunkered down. I was just expecting to get hammered from behind all, all the way to the start finish line because I thought the momentum of the pack was going to come up and take the lead away from me. And we won. Thanks. Right here, Melissa Thomas of Florida National News. Congratulations again to the team. Um, aside from tonight's wings, I know it's kind of a first for everyone. What was your most meaningful victory from, from previously? Like each of you can answer that. I mean, he's, he's won the Daytona 500 before. This, yeah, this is one of the biggest ones that there is. Yeah, this, it doesn't get any better than this. I've, I've been fortunate enough to win it before, but, um, you know, to win it with, uh, with this, this, guy, this guy beside me right here and, and Gene and, and uh, Tony Stewart, Smoke, and you know, those guys support us, and it's, it's just a different feel. It's, uh, in today's times, to win is so competitive and so hard to win. Um, this, the, you know, each time you win, it, it's, it means more because it's harder and harder to win each time. So, and you're only as good as your last win. So, uh, you know, it, it, this means more to me than anything I've ever done. I mean, I've won the championship with Alan Kowicki in 92. That was a big story. But this right here is, is huge. This, this moment and this feeling of giddiness and just belief, a surprise feeling, uh, it reminds me of my first win at Bristol in my second year of racing. It takes you all the way back. You feel like a kid again when you get to Daytona's victory lane. Well, I'd, I'll have to defer, but I'd say probably the greatest victory was when we won 2011 and Tony won at Homestead. And that was winning the championship. And uh, he went to the back, I don't know, two, twice. twice and drove to the front. And that, was, that, was, that race was the best race I can ever remember. And, and uh, uh, yeah, that's the one I remember the most. Um, same way, that's the one that means the most to me. I mean, it, we, you know, to battle all the adversity we had to battle to to go back and forth, and I think we passed 120 some odd cars for position that day. That's it's a lot of cars to pass. So uh, yeah. definitely was was pretty cool. But I can promise you this, uh, you know, even though I ran here 18 times or well, 17 times and didn't win this race, this is pretty daggone cool to to win it as a car owner. So uh, you yeah, know, this is this is pretty special. We're going to go next to Joe, then to Bob, and then we're going to go upstairs to the press box. Joe Menzer, uh, FoxSports.com over here. Uh, Kurt, uh, Tony said that this is probably the most patient, uh, best race you've ever run. I'm just kind of wondering how much your, your new positive attitude kind of played into that. And, and patience and a compliment coming from Tony Stewart, that means a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> Again, um, it, Daytona will challenge you mentally uh, and emotionally and you, for me uh, all the stuff that was getting thrown at us today it, our car still had speed and I just kept digging uh, it, it's a matter of having the right strategy and you believe in your crew chief it's a matter of having the right engine and I believed in Ford and then there's there's fate that helps you navigate through some of these wrecks I mean the circumstances that ha happen out on the track and avoiding wrecks you just have to be lucky and I was, I was thankful that I was able to slide through a lot of these wrecks and be in position at the end. Go next to Bob. Uh, Bob Hockers, ESPN. I had two. First for Kurt, uh, was there anything that you would have wanted done to your car if you had more than five minutes or if you could have added a part or a piece? And second, was would you have done anything different fuel mileage-wise um, if you were in a Chevy versus a Ford? Is there anything, is there anything that you have to do differently? I think they repaired it to the best of their ability, and when, when you have a damage and you have to put tape and repair work on the back bumper, what that means is that's a blinker, and people will just change lanes on you and not run with you. I was very thankful we didn't have damage on the back bumper because it still convinced guys our car uh, had, a, had a, a good shape to it, 
and therefore the people from behind are more friendly. So they did a great job to keep tape off the back of the car. And then as far as fuel mileage goes, you know, when you're switching over a manufacturer, there's a lot of components and there's, there's so many different things that can go wrong. This just shows the strength of what SHR went through this off season to be able to, to find every ounce of fuel on a switchover and to get all the fuel to that Ford engine. It's, uh, it, it's a testament to all the hard work and I'm very thankful from everybody. And for Tony, um, obviously you, had, you never won the Daytona 500 as a driver. Do you, does the, do you think the feeling of the owner as an owner compares to it at all? Or would have compared I'm pretty, to it? I'm pretty happy right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, it might kind of compare a little bit. So, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, w when, when you've grown up all your life as a race car driver, you want to win it as a driver. But there's, you know, for every driver, there's a point where you step out of the car and, and you do something different. And to have an opportunity to come back this year as an owner and still have the opportunity to be where we're at right now, I mean, that's, that's, that's a pretty exciting feeling. I mean, it's, it's what... You know, anybody that does anything with a race team, especially owners, I mean, that's what you strive for. I mean, you strive to win races and you strive to win championships. But, you know, first and foremost, you want to win the biggest one of the year, and that's out of the box here at Daytona. So, you know, I don't – I mean, if, like I said, if I knew I would retire and win the next race, I would have retired 17 years ago and, and got it that way. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a pretty cool deal. I mean, this is, this is one that, you know, we've waited for for a long, long time. Okay, we're going to go upstairs to the press box for a couple questions and then come back down to Dinah, Dan, and George. Caleb Whistler, Speedway Digest. Earlier this week at Daytona 500 Media Day, you said the track has been tough to me, but it owns me. Now that you are a Daytona 500 championship champion, how does that, how does this track basically, how does that change for you? Yeah, I said it owns me. It, it doesn't owe me anything. And you have to be humble when you walk through the gates here. And you have to approach each and every year with, again, that optimism and that belief that you can get the job done. And the more years that go by, you know, there's certain strategies or handling characteristics that you have to ignore or have to just forget about it because those aren't relevant to what it's going to take to win in 2017. And you just, you always hope that it can happen. And today is that day, and it happened because of all the great teamwork uh, great sponsors on this car, uh, the great engine under the hood from Doug Yates. I felt like this time around was the most complete that I was going into Speed Weeks, and I believed in it. And I'm just so happy that it all turned out. So thank you, Daytona. Keep it upstairs. Bruce Martin with Speed Sport, congratulations, everyone. Uh, Kurt, you uh, played the role of a good teammate in 2008 when you pushed your teammate at Team Penske. Ryan Newman to the victory. Now, you know nothing in this sport's ever guaranteed, but has that ever, have you ever reflected back on that and wondered if that might have been the closest you were ever going to get? I always looked for Newman to hang out with me in 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. He was never there. Everybody's very selfish in this garage. Uh, you always have to believe, but I tell you, the, the time I finished second to Waltrip in 2003, uh, that was just, Sheer luck. The rain started while I was running second. 2005, I was following Jeff Gordon going down the back straightaway, and I wanted to peek out high and go around him, but I saw a line of Chevrolets behind me. This is when I was driving for Ford, and I just <laughs> tucked back in line, and I wanted that one back the most. 2008, uh, 2007, I had a fast car, and I, I wrecked with my owner over here to my, to my left. That was a tough defeat because both of us, one of us should have ended up in victory lane that day. 08, I had to push Newman. I couldn't go around him. It would have, it would have just stalled the whole drafting line. 2011, uh, I won my, the clash. I won the qualifying duel, and I was in the same position, running third on the last lap to win the 500, and I didn't close the deal in 2011. That one stung the most. And then you got you to gotta have a top team. Stuart Haas has been that for me. And this year, all the pieces came together. Uh, and so... You always have to believe it can happen. One more upstairs. Yes, this is Don Caldwell from the Florida Times Union. This is for Gene and for Tony. As owners and as racers, what does a day like today mean when you're able to provide 
the resources, the parts, the pieces, and the people to help guys like Kurt and help guys like Tony uh, fulfill a dream. <coughs> That's for you, by the way. <laughs> Um, well, you know, the, the, I always, I always kind of look at the, as, as uh, to the team uh, because the, the team is, is composed of so many people that work so hard. Uh, I, I know the drivers, uh, you know, they, 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 they're the culmination of everything the team does. But um, uh, I actually I kind of think that sometimes the team members work as hard, if not harder, than the drivers to, to get the car to, uh, to, to victory lane. And, and to be honest with you, I, I kind of like that. That I think the process of getting to victory lane sometimes is more rewarding than say being in victory lane because uh, all the all the work and effort that goes into these uh, uh, cars and, and and you know you got these crew the crew chiefs and the engineers and and the guy, and the guys in in the, on the pit wall and all the fabricators back at the shop. I mean there are so many people it takes to make this happen. And uh, you know sometimes you know we're, we're sitting there popping the champagne, we forget about them, but they're really the heroes, I think, that really, that makes me feel good. I, I, I really feel like it's good to have done something to show them that, that what they did was really worth the effort. And, and uh, uh, anyways, that, that, that really works for me. And, and uh, it's really cool, too, to, to, you know, to be able to pick a driver and have that driver really um, uh, wind up in, in, in victory circle because it kind of, uh, Validates, you know, what your processes are in, in, in picking them, and then same thing with partners. Uh, 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 I certainly wouldn't have wanted a business partner uh, to be involved in racing. So, you know, uh, Tony was the perfect fit because he understands racing, and and uh, uh, I learned a lot from Tony about what it takes to be successful in, in this business. And you know, prior to that, you know, we 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 were a small team like there are out there today, and. And uh, um, it's a it's hard it's hard to to break through that ice and to, and, and to be on top and, and uh, but there's so many people that contribute to it and you know here we are sitting up here <laughs> thinking how wonderful we are but there's so many people you know back at the shop that you know got us here. I think mean, the cool thing you know <coughs> when the first year we we had Stuart Haas and when we won the All Star race that was the first race that the, the, the whole organization had won and. It, you know, it was really an eye-opening experience for me because I went from being a driver that had been fortunate enough to win races and, you know, be there in victory lane. and But to on that particular night to be there and see guys, you know, especially at Charlotte where, you know, guys that don't get to travel on the road get a chance to be there. But to see a lot of our, our guys um, there in victory lane and to realize that a lot of those guys had never won a race before in, in this series. And... Uh, you know, it was really an eye opener for me. It, 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 the fun part was that I, I realized it really, it was cool to be there as a driver and, and to win, and it was cool to bring Gene to Victory Lane. But like Gene mentioned, it was, it was really cool to take a group of people that had never been to Victory Lane before in the series and and be able to, to be a part of getting them there and to see. I mean, I was I was watching grown men cry. I mean, guys that just had worked a long time to get to that, to that, uh, you know, point in their career, and so. You know, I, I guess it, it from that moment on, it kind of changed my perspective of how I look at it as an owner and, and realizing that, you know, I've known all along in 38 years of racing that it, you have to have a good group of people to get you there. But, you know, I, I think the best part of it is when you get to celebrate with all those people. And, um, you know, it's, it's probably what I'm looking forward to most this week is being able to, to get back to North Carolina and, and go to the shop and, you know, pat all of them on the back and tell them congrats because, it, you know, like we said, we, we really – put those guys through a lot this winter of, uh, you know, all the additions and changes that we made. And, uh, you know, for them to, you know, for us to be able to come down here and win a Daytona 500 and be able to take it back to SHR, I mean, that's that's something I'm really proud of from the ownership side to be able to to thank those people. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good way to pat them on the back and, and say thanks is to win this race for them. Okay, we're going to come back downstairs. We're going to go to Dinah, then to Dan, then to George, then to Dustin, and then to Alan. Dinah Pulver with the Daytona Beach News Journal. Tony, this question is for you. I think you might have made a few of us tear up with your emotional celebration there in the pit box. Were you surprised at how emotional you got and how you felt? Yeah, I mean, you never know how you're going to act when those things happen. But, you know, I, 
Which I Tony mean, was she talking about anyway? I didn't well, know which not, Tony not she was. G well, was it him? Because he was pretty. He was comatose. I was, he didn't I even was, move. I was like a frog for a while. He was one jumping up and down. Yeah. He, well, he, he just sat there and laid his head back. I'm like, did he pass out? <laughs> I had to shake him. I had to shake him for a minute to see yeah, if he was awake. He did. He said, "Man, you won the 500." I'm like, "You sure, dude? Man, I wasn't 100 sure I did or not." But yeah, that, that, like I said, I, I've been. This is where I grew. I, I was born in Halifax Hospital across the street, and like I said, my mom retired from here, and my dad's raced all his life, and you know he's had some great drivers drive his stuff, and uh, you know it's it's to come here and 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 win the Daytona 500. Uh, in, in, anything I do is my dad, you know, he worked two jobs and I had two other brothers that raced and uh, dad had to work night and day and everything he had to make sure we could race and have fun. And uh, so my mom and dad are the ones I thought about the very first thing um, is, you know, growing up and, and where I'm at today. And my wife, Beth, you know, she's been my biggest supporter for the last 26 years, uh, sticking with me when things are bad, if I'm laid up in the hospital or whatever. But uh, you know, just all those emotions just just clamp on you at one time, and uh, you know it takes a few minutes for it to sink in. But uh, you know, it's pretty incredible. Go next to Dan. Dan, <clears throat> thanks. Uh, Dan Gelston, the Associated Press. Kurt, how, if at all, has Tony changed in retirement, either with demeanor or involvement, um, these last few months, and especially in speed weeks? Be very careful. <laughs> 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 I love your glasses. It makes you look so educated. <laughs> Fake it well. I tell you, the, the times that we raced against each other over the last few years and the, the role that he plays as a racer and then as an owner, he puts each hat on distinctively. And when he walks into team meetings and has to talk as a, as a team owner, he is spot on. There's nothing, you can't pull the wool over a racer owner. Um, I made one stupid move at a Pocono restart, uh, and he came in there and gave me the smack across the back of the head, like, what the hell were you thinking? And I was like, that was the racer, Tony. But then that was the owner as well, because, you know, I didn't put the car in a good position to get the best finish. Tony's very patient, and he is astute to the management of the people. And you can hear that in his voice tonight, talking about how he's watching grown men cry. There is that self-satisfaction that he gets uh, as, as well as Gene, as well as Tony Gibson, to watch the, their team perform and to put all these puzzle pieces into place. It's really neat to have this powerful of a team, a great owner, a, a champion driver that just turned into a full-time owner. We've made our stable that much stronger with Tony Stewart in, his, in this role. Uh, the sky's the limit, and we're, I'm just so happy to have everybody in the position that they're in and to win in our first race with Ford. Uh, those guys... They have some passion, and it matches our passion at SHR. Okay, we'll go next to George, then to Dustin, this gentleman over here. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt right back. Uh, George Diaz with Orlando Center, right back here. Before um, Chase ran out of gas, were you starting to plot any strategy to make a run at him at, at all, or how did that transpire? How, how was it playing out in those final few laps? I, I didn't even know he ran out of gas. Um, I felt like when the car numbers that I was looking at, 24, it wasn't Jeff Gordon. When I was looking at, you know, the 14 car who wasn't up front, but that was Tony Stewart, a legendary driver. Uh, I didn't see Kenseth up there. I didn't see Harvick up there. I was seeing all these young guys, all these new guys. And I'm like, ha ha, I'm the old bull here. I just got to take my time. And I'm going to walk around here the right way and give it my best, s smartest decisions that I can make, even though I had all the damage that I had. And I figured that these guys would get a little overzealous and make a few moves that they couldn't keep up with. And I didn't know that Chase ran out of gas. I hate that for him because he definitely had the car to beat. And the kid's going to be a, a superstar in this sport. And circumstances weren't on his side today. But all those kids, I mean, we put on a performance those, those last 50 laps and nobody wrecked, everybody came home safe and put on a great show, and that's what I'm really happy about. Go next to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports for Tony uh, Stewart. Uh, Tony, um, you've gone, can you, I guess, just kind of describe the journey that you and Greg Zipidelli 
um, have gone on, especially at this place uh, through the years, the, the successes and, and the dejections and, and what it meant to, to win this with, with him today and to share that with, with, with I guess, what that, how you describe what that journey's been to, to this point for, for you guys because you've been so connected? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that actually because that was one person that I, you know, we we talked about a lot of people here, and that's someone that I feel like we need to give a lot of credit to because you know he should be sitting up here as much as the four of us are because he's the one that's really led the charge and um, you know with the whole switch over and and uh, you know leading everybody at the shop. I mean, it starts with him, and uh, you know it's like like Kurt said. I mean, there was a year here that that you know. Kurt's car and our car were the best two cars here, and I got a pit road speeding penalty, and I I knew that was one that I let get get away from us, and and you know when it caught when I caused the wreck that took Kurt and I out. So uh, you know there were a couple times you know Kurt's forgetting that when he pushed Ryan to the wind, he pushed Ryan past us for that. I didn't forget; I just didn't mention it. I, <laughs> I was remember, remembering at the same time, but you know that was one that we you know. And that was really before guys really blocked like they do now. I mean, I, I sat there and I, I couldn't even look at Zippy for the whole week leading into Atlanta because I felt like, yeah, I felt like if I moved and moved in the upper lane there that you know they were coming so fast that I was going to wreck us doing it. And, and we had Kyle, uh, was our teammate at the time, and you know tried to stay with our teammate and make it work. And, and I just felt like I let it get away. So this is this was really cool. I mean, Zippy's here with. Uh, Pretty much all of his family, except for his oldest son, isn't here with us this weekend. But um, you know, it, it's it's just a big relief, and that was really cool to see him in victory lane too. Just you know, he he just kept saying it's just a relief finally. You know, we, we knew we were close a couple times, and uh, you know, just never could finish it off. So it's nice to you know, like I said, even in this capacity, it's nice to finish it off this way. Go to the right here. Thank you. Hi, Kurt. Uh, Peter King, CBS Radio News. I'm just curious, and I'm kind of surprised nobody's asked this uh, before. Part uh, two parts. What are you doing tonight to celebrate after you get done with us here? And number two, on a, in a more serious vein, how long do you get to savor this win before you have to start thinking about next weekend? I, I'm sure Monster is organizing something right now as we speak. I, I, have, I don't have my cell phone yet, but... I, I'm sure the party will start somewhere, and I have no idea where. And I hope the fog lifts by the time Friday rolls around when we get to Atlanta. Uh, this, this is something that's special. Like Tony Stewart has said, Gene Haas has said, you've won this race before. This is a championship wrapped into these two weeks. And there's so many emotions. It's, it's hard. I mean, it, when I put my hands in the concrete that they're going to put out front of the speedway after it, it, it dries, that's when it sunk in, literally, when my hands were going into concrete that we achieved this special moment. A yeah, great family uh, that's here with me with the Van Meter family. Uh, my mom and dad didn't make it for this race. Um, we'll, we'll definitely have a nice celebration tonight, but we have to keep it in perspective. Uh, we've got a nice, um, don't we take the car to yeah. the, the, the museum tomorrow morning? Yeah. And I'm sure I got to go to New York or a few other places uh, to celebrate this with different media members and different uh, shows. I mean, this is this is a celebration. And it, as my uh, groomsmen would say right before the wedding, we have to pace ourselves. We got to pace ourselves. <laughs> so uh, I'll I'll use their uh, words of wisdom, and we'll get to Atlanta, and we will uh, jump on the track, and we'll be smart and attack for uh, for win number two. We'll pace ourselves with two more questions. We're going to go to Joseph and then to Lewis. Joseph Walken, FrontStretch.com. Kurt, how do you feel like you've changed as a person, not only, not even just as a driver, but as a person off the track since you joined Stuart Haas? I feel like experience on the track continues to grow, uh, but I was neglecting experience in life and the different circumstances uh, that, that were happening, I wasn't learning enough from. And my wife, Ashley, has helped me digest better feelings towards uh, how to approach situations. And it's like today when the mirror broke at lap with 30 to go, I looked at it and I, I saw her in it. I'm like, what would she, she's just going to smile. She's just going to figure it out. I, I tell you, there's age and, and wisdom, they, they come together. Youth is wasted on the young. 
<laughs> and I've been through some uh, different patches here or there, but to have a team that believes in me, that's the most important part, to have a wife that believes in me and a family, of course, all the way through all of this, and then to be a monster athlete for the last six years. They're a sponsor that's stuck by my side, and we've, uh, we've won some good races together, and now we get to toss a Daytona 500 trophy in the lobby in Corona, California, as well as Oxnard, California, with Haas Automation. Okay, Lewis, we'll finish it off there. Uh, Lewis Frank of Reuters, to your left. And congratulations. All. Kurt, watching the race today was a little bit like your career. If it was a television show, you'd call it Survivor. W what's kept you going all these years through the ups and downs? How many times have you told me, Gene, that I, I'm a survivor? How many times <laughs> did you say that? I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. Yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> I, they, that's what Daytona's about. You got to roll with it. You have to find uh, what it's going to take to win. And our car didn't have too much damage on it, on the nose and on the tail. I felt like it still had speed in it. I knew Gibson was going to give me the right pitch strategy. And I just kept believing that it was going to happen. I mean, 17 years of, of heartache can be erased. And it's a race tonight. And having uh, the, the chance to win as a team with all of these sponsors and this new Ford partnership, it, it flashes through your mind of all the people that have helped you get to this point in life. And I have a lot of uh, great friends back in Las Vegas that helped me in the grassroots racing that I think of on a night like tonight. Well, Kurt, you are no longer just a survivor. You are now forever remembered as a Daytona 500 champion. Congratulations again, guys, and uh, best of luck next week in Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you. I remember that. I remember that was a good You're a survivor. <laughs> well, you have a good memory. You have a memory of